Next question is from Jules Tillman. What do you think of the Jefferson deadlift? Are there benefits to straddling the bar for building deadlift strength? So this is, you guys know what this exercise is, right? Yeah, yeah. It goes yeah between I had your to legs. look it up. At first I was like confused with the Jefferson curl versus this, but then I, I, I was like, oh, that's what they call it. Yeah, it's just a very odd uh, lift. Mainly it doesn't look like anything else. It's, it's off center, obviously. Um, here's some of the benefits I could see. Now, admittedly, I've never consistently trained this. Yeah, I've never consistently I've never programmed it. Never programmed it consistently, but I've messed around with it and based off of what I know of the human body, I would say it probably it's definitely strengthening uh same similar muscles that you would get with maybe a trap bar deadlift, mm -hmm. but the difference is you're rotated. So it might help with strengthening a slightly rotated upper body while you lift, which might have some functional abilities in the real world when you're lifting a couch or moving things. One yeah. one thing I would say is make sure you train both sides evenly. I could see this really causing problems oh, yeah. with somebody favoring one side, you know? Yeah, that's immediately was what I was thinking in terms of asymmetry and, you know, sort of addressing that. I've seen people, you know, like, create these types of exercises where they're sort of like, uh, you know, loaded uh, off center. And uh, it, it does kind of help from a functional standpoint to be able, you know, to address this in everyday life because all these opportunities comes up all the time like there's something heavy that you need to move and the weight shifts on you and you know training your body to react and adapt to that is i think is very beneficial um uh, and and again i i haven't i haven't done these enough to really like you know voice too much on it other than i speculate that it is like you you are getting you know anterior posterior a little bit like you would a trap bar so that would you know where my mind would go is like similar benefits to that with also the anti-rotational uh work with heavy weight as well it looks to me like a a um sumo deadlift has married a a barbell hack squat mm -hmm. That's kind of what I when I look at it. That's mm. what it what it look the benefits that you get from sumo deadlifting and what you get from like a barbell hack squat kind of molded into one one exercise. Um, I don't see it having the question is referring to a, a, a traditional or conventional deadlift. I don't see it having a lot of carryover to that because if you notice when you do the Je Jefferson deadlift, you're in a much more squatted position. Mm. It's much closer to the hack squat mm -hmm. or the sumo deadlift than it is a conventional deadlift. So I don't see it doing a lot of carryover to a, a conventional deadlift. But like you guys, this is I've messed around with this, but I, this is not uh, made its way into like regular programming for me. If I were to do it with a client, um, this would be my client who just like, they love like unconventional lifts and mm -hmm. functional training and challenging themselves. Do like bam ba bamboo bar stuff. With yeah, them too. yeah. Yeah. You know, they just, they, they, cause I, like Sal was saying, there's a little bit of rotation in the upper body while you're having to stabilize that weight. And then it, it is challenging that way. That could have some good functional carryover. I'm not saying that that would be a bad exercise. I definitely wouldn't put it. If someone came to me and said, Adam, I want to get my my conventional deadlift up. I saw these Jefferson deadlifts. I heard this could help that. I would not program that in that with, with that intention. It would be more of a fun, functional, unconventional exercise that I would put in into a routine because I like to challenge my client that way. They like the challenge. So if you're asking the question like that and you and you like really challenging exercises, then sure, I think there's nothing yeah. wrong with it, doing it. It was invented in the 1800s by, by a strong man. And the thing back then, strong men liked to, they, they would do these exhibitions. And the goal of the exhibition was to impress the audience. And they'd find weird ways of lifting a lot uh, of weight. You know, there's like a, a hip bridge type exercise that some would do where they put a board across their lap and then, uh, you know, a, a horse would walk across it or right. all these weird kind of lifts. A Jefferson deadlift balances weight between the front and the back of the body. So technically, if you get really good at it, uh, biomechanically speaking, you should be able to lift a lot of weight with this because it's a little bit more balanced. You're not you, you're not having to use so much of your low back and your back to support you. There's a lift in I think it's in Scotland or Ireland, Ireland called the Dinny Stones. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Mm -hmm. These two incredibly heavy stones, and that's kind of mm -hmm. how they lift them: one in front, one in back, and they got to they got to stand up yeah, with their them. Handles like, it almost like they're they're in the the rocks or the cement or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. so lifting like this is was around for a long time. It's just because it's offset and weird and it, it's it lost popularity, but. You know, I'm going to mess around with it a little bit. I'd love to report back on, you know, how I felt. 